This is Cary TV. We live in a great community, you know, and our first responders are world class. They are indeed. And you know, one of the things I think makes Cary so outstanding is the selfless dedication of many of its citizens. You are absolutely right. And in Cary, we have a program where you can learn how to help. And today, we have someone here to talk about that. Outstanding. You're watching Bud TV, the monthly program that keeps you informed about what's going on in and around Cary Town Government. This month on Bud, we'll talk to Cary Fire Captain Alicia Dismuke on how to join our community emergency response team. Then we'll take a look back at Cary history for a minute. And for all things green in Cary, Shrishna Guilford takes us there. And it's hurricane season. Take to the web to receive notifications of local emergencies. All that and more here on Bud TV. Hi, welcome to Bud TV. We're here at one of the many locations in Cary from where our first responders operate. To help Cary citizens better prepare for weather emergencies, the Town of Cary Fire Department offers free training for a Community Emergency Response Team, or CERT. Participants learn about disaster preparedness, light search and rescue, medical care, fire extinguisher use, and disaster psychology. And with us to talk about the CERT program this morning is Cary Fire Department Community Risk Coordinator, Captain Alicia Dismuke. Alicia, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you morning. so much for having me. I appreciate it. Tell us a bit about the CERT program. So the CERT program, um, I guess you need to know what it stands for first. CERT is the Community Emergency Response Team. Um, the program started in Los Angeles in the 80s as a way to train citizens first and then empower them to help their neighbors in the absence of professional responders. So if you can imagine Los Angeles um, after a major earthquake, highways could be down buildings could be down it could take extra time for professional responders to get into areas to help people so they wanted citizens to be able to help safely that's where the program started the federal government picked the program up and it's been in carry for a little over 10 years now we've probably trained over 500 citizens um, and it basically teaches you how to safely go out and help your neighbors before professional responders arrive things like when to use a fire extinguisher when not to. Um, can I go into a structure safely and expect it not to fall on my head to help, to help someone? Light medical aid, things like controlling bleeding, um, treating a burn, splinting an injury, um, and then a couple other things, but it's just really about neighbors helping neighbors. And who typically signs up for these programs? Um, in Cary, we've had everyone from young teenagers, 13, 14, attend with their parents, and we've had people into their 80s attend. So anyone who's interested in learning more about helping yourself first and then your neighbors, anyone can attend. And how can we find out more information? Um, you can visit the Town of Cary's website and type in CERT. It'll take you to the fire department page. Um, it has some history on CERT. Also, there are some, um, you can do some research on some other links and you can learn about it on the federal level if you'd like. And what if we don't have time for a formal program? Is there something that we can do to be prepared in our homes for an emergency? Absolutely. I always like the adage, how do you eat an elephant? Start one bite at a time. That's how you should um, approach your preparedness goals. Um, start with things in your home, evacuation plans. How am I going to get out of my home should an emergency happen? How am I going to get out of my neighborhood? Take that to how am I going to then get out of my town? And then finally, how am I going to get out of my state? So you start small. Think of things like an emergency out-of-state contact person. Um, in an emergency, sometimes cell phone signals will not transmit into an area or um, into an area. So if you wanted to call your spouse and say, I'm okay, um, I'm at work still, that signal may not go through. You may, able, may be able to call Aunt Martha in Minnesota and say, I'm at work. Um, let my spouse know and then when they call Aunt Martha, she can relay that message. Um, also keep in mind things like text messages sometimes work when cellular, um, the phone call will not work. Think of things like do I have enough money to pay for expenses should the power not work or the phone service not work? Obviously credit card machines would go down. Do I have enough cash on hand to pay for expenses in the short term? Um, in importance of placing important documents somewhere you can get them. Most of us live our lives on a nationwide scale, some of us globally now. 
Imagine trying to collect birth certificates, marriage, um, marriage licenses, divorce decrees, adoption records, um, all that stuff on a global level possibly, how maddening that would be. So we really recommend putting that somewhere safe. Um, along those same lines, have really good documentation for insurance purposes. They're going to ask for documentation of what you own. Make sure that is somewhere safe. Um, and finally, take the time to prepare for your pets. Um, make sure their licenses are up to date. Make sure their um, vaccinations are up to date. Shelters oftentimes won't take pets, so you may be left traveling with your pet. You're stressed in an emergency, and so is your pet. You want to be sure you have documentation should anyone ask for that. Alicia, thank you. That is wonderful information. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you. This is your Cary History Minute. Located at 311 South Academy Street, the Dr. John Pullen Hunter House is one of the best preserved structures in Cary's National Register Historic District. This brick bungalow was constructed in 1925 and was the home and office of one of Cary's prominent doctors. Dr. Hunter was a practicing physician in the town from 1920 to 1959 and the son of the Reverend Alsey Dalton Hunter, an early Baptist minister. Dr. Hunter was the president of the Cary Chamber of Commerce, served in the Cary Town Council and the Wake County Board of Education, and was a member of the Cary Masonic Lodge. The one and a half story house is remarkably preserved on the inside and out. It also features a rectangular shed roofed frame building at the rear that served as a chicken house. The house, along with the chicken house, was designated as a Cary Landmark in 2008. July is Parks and Rec Month, and that means discovering the power of play and adventure. For children and adults, play is a vital part of our mental well-being, physical health, and personal interactions. This month, we're teaming up with the National Parks and Recreation Association and challenging you to get your play on with our local parks and recreation. It could be summer camps, an adult sports league, or exploring some of the over 90 miles of trails and greenways. It could be a Zumba class, walking your dog, having a picnic, playing ping pong or bocce in our new downtown park, riding a bicycle, kayaking, or taking a swim. Parks and play go hand in hand. Grab a recreation program online at townofcary.org slash programs. Does the heat of the summer find you cooling under the shade of a tree? Together with your love and care for trees, we have nearly 50% canopy cover and are proud to be a Tree City USA community for 34 consecutive years. Our crews help maintain trees at 159 town facilities, including parks and community centers, and along approximately 125 miles of streets. Everything from planting, pruning, pest control, and dealing with hazard trees. We care for our urban forests each day. And as we all plant, prune, and protect trees, join us in following industry best practices, one of which is proper mulching. With the right touch, mulch can help retain soil moisture, act as a buffer against extreme temperatures, and help suppress weeds. When time to mulch, know what's needed. Check the depth of existing mulch, and if sufficient, Use a rake to break it up and refresh the look. Think three by three by three, up to three inches of mulch and at least three inches away from the tree trunk so the root base is exposed and in about a three feet wide edge around the canopy when possible. Following suggestions like these can help you avoid mulching too high up a tree's trunk. In fact, a mound of mulch like this is sometimes referred to as a mulch volcano. And while some find it aesthetically pleasing, it's never good for our tree's growth or development. It can make the tree bark prone to disease, it can attract insects and rodents, and it can affect root growth. For more tips on tree planting and care, search tree care at townofcary.org. And thank you for helping us maintain the health of our greenery and preserving our urban forests. I'm Shrishta Guilford, and remember to carry it green. The Town of Cary is proud to join Wake County in helping our citizens be prepared in times of disasters or emergencies. Check out ReadyWake.com, the reverse 911 tool we use to communicate with you in times of emergencies. By registering with ReadyWake, the town will be able to notify you via your preferred means of contact, phone, text, and email when there is an imminent threat to life, health, and property. Examples include hazmat situations, extreme weather events, 
urgent information related to police, fire, or public health, and urgent utility information, like boil water notices. Register online at readywake.com, and to protect personal information, users must have an email address. Don't have an email address? Search ReadyCarry at townofcarry.org to download and print the form. Deliver that form in person to Cary Town Hall, 316 North Academy Street. And now we want to leave you with something we found along the way. Citizens joined town council members recently to mark the dedication of Cary's downtown park and streetscape improvements. It included flipping a coin into the fountain, which later became the star attraction for the day. What a town we live in.